CBDC talk has made its way back into the headlines, into the news cycle here, and it started with UK and their new prime minister kind of coming out and talking about CB CBDCs and loving them so much, and the majority of people might not really even know what a CBDC is. So CBDC stands for Central Bank Digital Currency, basically everything you know about the Fed in the US or the Bank of England in the UK, all these central banks that they print money and then set how expensive it is to borrow money. And that's kind of the extent of their power. Obviously, if you print too much, you get what we're dealing with now, inflation galore. If you stopped printing, you'd get deflation. They would complain about that. And if you made it too expensive to borrow, you crash the economy. It's no expense to borrow. You make bubbles. So it's it's just a lot of ways that they interact is just has weird kind of interactions with regular people who don't even vote for the people who are in charge of these central banks. But add on top of that, a central bank digital currency aspect, and now they have complete control over all of your money. They can decide what you can buy, what you can't buy. If you say something wrong, they can turn your bank account off, they can turn your card off, and you can't buy anything. So just imagine going to Walmart and trying to pay for your groceries and being stopped say, well, you actually made a politically incorrect statement so your your card has been turned off that could be a reality with cbdc's which is why anyone who knows anything about cbdc's is pushing against all of this push for it because it is not a good thing financially it would be the worst thing that could ever happen because all the power would go to central banks who people don't even vote for but this is all starting and coming back in the news because of the uk's new prime minister and uh, it starts with the uk making a new kind of policy to regulate crypto as financial instruments so to bring crypto into their own umbrella into their own reg regulations this is something that is kind of normal you know people talk about regulation all the time uh, but here you see what they want to do is uh, the substance here is to treat them crypto like other forms of financial assets and not to prefer them, but also to bring them within the scope of regulation for the first time. So Bitcoin and crypto at a whole are in regulation. They're in that scope. They are completely regulated. There's things that happen in Bitcoin. When you sell it, you have to make capital gains. When you do all this stuff, you got to report things. It is regulated. People act like it's not regulated at all. It's the Wild West, but it's really not. And also they talk about the measures could regulate crypto promotions and outlaw companies that are not authorized to operate in the country. So the first part, regulate crypto promotions, uh, probably needs to be done absolutely needs to be done something needs to happen because the amount of scamming going on in crypto is unacceptable some sort of fix to it should be done it's not a good thing and that makes a lot of people mad because they think someone's gatekeeping crypto or gatekeeping becoming wealthy when in reality they are just trying to protect people from scams because there has been so many scams and rug pulls nft rug pulls regular crypto rug pulls you look in 2017 the icos were all basically the og rug pulls so people shouldn't be chasing wealth and by doing that falling for people who know that what they're doing to scam them and take their money then here to outlaw companies that are not authorized to operate in the country if you like crypto and you're a huge crypto guy and you think oh my god i hate bitcoin but i love crypto there's people out there uh you should be terrified of this because basically bitcoin is the only crypto really that can't be shut down can't be banned you can't get rid of it when countries ban bitcoin it actually skyrockets in usage because it highlights the reason for bitcoin to exist and even in the most controlling country in the world in china they have banned bitcoin time and time again and they still can't get rid of it even all of the controls they have they can't get rid of bitcoin so it just proves how resilient bitcoin is but for the rest of crypto even eth if you go after vitalik you can really shut down eth you could do whatever you want force him to make uh improvements or like push the team in certain directions because he's the face of ethereum you can really use him to either ban ethereum or push fear into the market you could use him to do a lot of things so that's just one thing that separates bitcoin from all of crypto is bitcoin doesn't have a figurehead doesn't have a leader and you can't get rid of it it's been proven time and time again no matter what you try and do to ban it you just can't get rid of it and here we have the uh video of the new uk prime minister pushing heavily to introduce a cbdc this video he just talks about it how much it's great and it's so good and it's gonna do this and that it's gonna be amazing for people when in reality 
it's not going to be amazing and it's going to be really, really bad for people. And it's going to be a way for the government to have financial surveillance and control money even more than it does already. Today, I'm proud to say that under the UK's presidency, the group of the world's seven most advanced economies, the G7, is launching a set of public policy principles for retail central bank digital currencies, CBDCs. Central bank digital currencies could be a digital version of money, a bit like a digital banknote that could be used alongside physical notes and coins. So the first part there, not a lot of sense. It could be digital money. We have digital money. That's a knock against Bitcoin. People say Bitcoin's digital money, and then all the bears and people who hate Bitcoin come out and say, we already have digital money, which is true. We have digital dollars. If you send money through Cash App, through Venmo, through PayPal, through whatever, it's digitally. You're sending money digitally. You're not using physical money. So we already have that digital money and kind of infrastructure there. So saying CBDCs could be digital money, it it's just not true. We already have that. It already exists. It's already a thing. Unlike most of the digital money people use daily today, it would be issued directly by a central bank, like the Bank of England in the UK. And governments and central banks across the world are working together, looking into what having a digital currency might mean in practice. I can tell you exactly what it might mean in practice. It would mean ultimate surveillance over financial institutions and over money for every single person in the world or whatever country that has this. They will be able to control every aspect of your money and your bank account. Uh, imagine the stimulus too. So when stimulus got sent out, if you had a $1,200 check, the government could send you $1,200, say this is only for food and expires at the end of the month. So that $1,200, you get sent to your bank account. And if you buy $500 worth of food for that month and have what, $800 left over, you would get that 800 would just disappear. It would just go away. It would be taken out of your bank account, just disappear. Uh, so that's just more control on they can control how you can spend money, what you can do with the money, and just really mold what they want to happen with money. This includes issues that people care about, such as ensuring users' money would be safe and secure, that it could work with other ways to pay, would be energy efficient and available to everyone. A potential CBDC could offer businesses and consumers new ways to pay in the future. It's all part of the wider story of digital innovation that has delivered benefits to millions around the world and in the UK. The decision on whether to launch a central bank digital currency is for each country to make, and no G7 jurisdiction has yet made that choice. These decisions raise important questions about the reshaping of our economy, financial systems, and the way in which people interact with money and payments. That's why working together and careful evaluation with our international partners is essential. Kind of sounds like the G7 is trying to do a one currency for all countries involved, which I don't think would ever work. And I don't think maybe they're not trying to do that. I don't see a world where countries come together and give all the power to a different country over their country. So it gets very mixy. Uh, but the, these cbdc's that he's just speaking so highly of and all the good things that can happen and new ways to pay but it doesn't how is it going to make new ways to pay you there's you're not, it's not there's nothing new about a cbdc and the digital money we use now with apple pay and credit cards and debit cards it there's nothing different other than maybe the back end in which the customer and most of like the employers, all the businesses don't really even see. So they're not going to see it as a different way. It's not really going to innovate anything other than the central bank's ability to control. In the UK earlier this year, I announced a new joint task force between the Treasury and the Bank of England to look into a potential CBDC as a complement to cash and bank deposits. We're also hearing from firms, technology experts and others. Under the leadership of the UK, this report today will help support and inform exploration of CBDCs in the G7 and beyond. That part from him is a little interesting, saying to use CBDCs and physical money together is going to be a transition period. So what he can say and what all bankers will say and central banks will say is we're launching the CBDCs alongside physical money. But then over time, it's going to be either phasing out physical money or make it very difficult to obtain or even use physical money until that's all gone. And then the only thing is this CBDC that they have complete control over. So 
that seems like more of the move to go towards down there. And in terms of money, it doesn't really innovate anything. It doesn't change anything. Doesn't make any you know system more efficient other than maybe backends and then the central bank system. But the way people are going to use it, it's not really going to innovate anything for them. With these principles, the G7 is leading an important step change in the global policy conversation. The report covers a range of important matters, such as financial stability, cyber resilience, energy efficiency, privacy, inclusion, and tackling illicit finance. Yeah, because central banks and the regulation and governments in control today have such a good hold on that. The traditional systems are so good at everything, handling illicit finance, that's a multi-trillion dollar a year industry, these energy prices skyrocketing, that's instability of the of finance, financial instability. And right now, that, that's not going to change anything. CBDCs aren't going to change them printing money. They're still going to be able to do that. They're still going to be able to force inflation and do all this stuff and make the wrong decisions because, again, they're human. And then humans can make wrong decisions. And that's why Bitcoin as an alternative with a non-human element to it, its monetary policy in Bitcoin is not set by a person. It is already there. It's what it's going to be. Every single block already has reward. More The Bitcoin that gets minted, everybody knows. Everyone can audit. You don't have to trust. You can verify. And that's the system that it goes down. If when 2020 happened and everything crashed, Bitcoin didn't all of a sudden go, okay, difficulty all the way down, print Bitcoin like there's no tomorrow. It was the same system. It stayed the same, nothing changed, and you can work off of that. To, that can bring financial stability, working off a system that isn't going to change and everyone knows isn't going to change. That can bring stability, not the systems we have now. On top of that, money is made up. Money doesn't exist. So you could think if money has to exist. That's how I pay my bills with dollars. But if everybody tomorrow decided, just everyone collectively decided the dollar's worthless, nobody wants it, then the dollar's worthless and nobody wants it. It doesn't matter how many dollars you have. If everyone agrees that it's worthless, then it's worthless. That's kind of what we're seeing with Bitcoin right now is a lot of people are saying this is more worth more than the fiat money and it has value. And the more people that move towards that, move away from the central bank control, and that's when they start to get a little worried because money doesn't really exist. If people go from dollars to Bitcoin, you could absolutely do that. If people say Bitcoin has value, dollars don't, then Bitcoin has value and dollars don't. So hopefully nothing comes up with this CBDC stuff. Nobody wants it. Nobody should want it. Nobody should be rooting for it. It's only going to lead to bad things and it should just be shut down right here, right now. Get rid of it and don't ever talk about it again because all of this stuff is basically stuff that only happens in China that everyone is starting to try and bring out now. But that's going to do it for this video. As always, don't just smash the like button and subscribe. We're to 1,000 subscribers. And see you guys in my next video.